I'll start by thanking all of you for coming out tonight and uh, being with us to, to witness this uh, this event that we that I know everyone at this table is going to remember for the rest of our days. I also would like to thank Alan Harry for the wonderful blessing from the Squamish Nation and starting our term off in such a wonderful and, and generous way. Thank you. Thank you to His Honor uh, Judge Sutherland for swearing us in and ensuring we felt the weight and responsibility of our new roles. Thank you to Staff Sergeant Gareth Bradley and his partner, whose name I didn't catch at the start of this, for putting on the red surge, keeping us in line and ensuring we start out on the right side of the law. And of course, Devin Bill of the Black Tusk Caledonia Pipes and Drums Band, not only for making sure everyone knew we were coming, <laughs> but showing us the way. I thought a lot about this day, these words, this room, how it would feel to be here with you tonight. And I totally forgot about these chains. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but nothing prepared me for this. I sit here with my entire being filled with gratitude. I'm so grateful that, I've had, that I have had the privilege of being born and raised right here in the inspiring unceded territory of the Squamish Nation. Squamish is not only my home, it's part of who I am. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to continue to serve this town and its people for another four years now as your mayor. The last four years have been marked by intense learning. And I'm thankful to have been able to experience Mayor Elliott's kind and strong brand of leadership. From her, I learned the importance and power of consensus building, diplomacy that starts off quietly, and generosity as a chair, and sharing the limited power that comes with being a mayor. There's not a single meeting where I didn't learn something from you, Mayor Elliott. Our community owes you a debt of gratitude for your service over the last eight years. Thank you. I am not... I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little jealous of your well-deserved upcoming vacation. <laughs> I'll be here working hard to uphold the standard that you set. I would like to extend my gratitude to my wife and campaign manager, Talita Orozco Herford. You may know her as Leah. Love, your unwavering support has been instrumental in not only this achievement, but also nearly every other accomplishment in my life. I couldn't fathom doing any of this without you but at my side. Thank you. I'm grateful to Josh and my daughter Jada for their support and for helping to keep me young at heart. Also, I'd like to thank my parents, Sheila and John, for teaching me the value of community, empathy, hard work, and for the unconditional love they've always shown me. I am thankful for the support of my family from near and far. Thank you so much to the amazing team that directly helped the campaign and to the many folks that stepped forward to offer help that I was unable to harness. Thank you. And also thank you to all the campaign donors. Your generous donations were instrumental in getting the message out. I'm grateful to all the unknown and unnamed folks that fixed my signs when they happened to fall over. <laughs> Most importantly, I wanna thank you, the people of Squamish that voted for me and well for all of us sitting here before you. I do not take your trust lightly and I will do my level best to uphold this trust as I perform my duties on your behalf over the next four years. I pledge to work constructively with council in a way that represents the best interests of the entire community. Elections are rarely easy. However, this election process was particularly challenging. Voters had to not only research the candidates, but navigate a relentless onslaught of misinformation, attack campaigns, social media trolls, both real and manufactured, while attempting to decipher the intentions of the anonymous people or entities responsible. This was no mean feat and has left a mark on all of us. It not only alienated an unknown number of voters, but significantly reduced the pool of candidates willing to step forward. And I applaud those that did put their name forward, and particularly those sitting with me here tonight for their collective ability to plot a course on the high road. These tactics started nearly a year ahead of the election and were clearly intended to interfere with our democracy. I commend the voters for their choices in the faces of these forces. Now that the campaign and election process has concluded, it's important to recognize these unnamed outside forces are still out there, likely nursing their wounds and undoubtedly assessing their next move. I want you to know that I will do everything in my power to fight these forces. Squamish is my home and I'll do my level best to protect it. These tactics have no place in any democracy and they'll not be tolerated in our home. 
Thank you, Squamish, for rejecting big money spent on negative campaigning. Please remain vigilant, engaged, check your sources, and ask questions. Squamish is not broken, no matter what these anonymous folks have tried to tell us. I will work hard with the council and the community to repair the damage caused and endeavor to address the, the fractures they attempted to exploit. In the coming weeks and months, this council will work together to define its collective priorities and goals for the next four years. Squamish is facing complex challenges and opportunities. Realizing the full, true potential of Squamish, our home, will take all of us working constructively and enthusiastically together. And when I say all of us together, I mean not only those of us elected, but the community as a whole. Yes, all of you. I'm humbled by the support, inspired by the weight of the role, and so very confident that we can achieve great things together, leaving no one behind. Thank you.